<laughs> okay. Uh, you go in, Bev. Okay, so let's talk about rules of thumb. Um, we use these all the time, we find them very handy, but the first thing we've got to establish is what is a rule of thumb? And by the way, it's got nothing to do with cooking. It just came into my head while I was cooking and I thought I would get it on camera and tell you all about it. Um, a rule of thumb, that, as we call a rule of thumb, is a general rule that we use when we're out sailing that makes our life easier. It is not a hard and fast rule. It will not work 100% of the time. It will not guarantee you perfect safety, which is why they do not include it on sailing courses. However, these are things that we've learned while we've been out and about, and you may find them useful too. Each one comes with a massive dose of salt, so be prepared for that. We will try and point out when each rule will fail. Um, they're not really rules as such, they're more like guidelines. But just bear that in mind. So with all that, remembering that a rule of thumb is prone to failure, uh, let's talk about the rules of thumb that we use while we're out sailing that make our life easier. You're still rolling. Oh, you didn't tell me. Okay, you're rolling. There's no ding noise. Yeah, well, anyway, we're rolling. Okay. <sighs> okay, so why am I talking about rules of thumb while I'm cooking Mexican chili chicken soup? The answer is because of rule of thumb number one. It always takes longer than you think. Whatever you're doing on a boat, whatever you're planning, you're working in a tiny little space. No matter what you want to do, something has to be moved to get something else out, then it has to be put back and something else has to move. Maybe you're filming for a YouTube channel, not if you've got any sense. But the upshot of it is that it takes forever just to get the stuff set up. Um, I've got people coming aboard tonight. We're going to have a little uh, thing to do. We've got lots of things coming up this week. So filming the episode is going to take longer than we think. It's life on a boat. So I'm afraid you're going to get this episode in bits and pieces where we can shove it into little nooks and crannies because it takes longer than you think. <sighs> Another very useful rule of thumb is that pork bellies are really cheap and nourishing and... I know we do have a bilge pump, but never mind. What's going on? Well, we had a leak the other day. It won't be long till it goes off. Whoa! It'd be brilliant if you could turn it off at the panel. Come on! Can you turn the bloody thing off? I know. I'm cleaning out the water in the bilges, and it just reminds me of another rule of thumb, and that is that water is incompressible. And what that basically means is, is that whatever's happening on the, on the seabed will happen at the top of the, on the top of the water. So it will happen where you are. So say for instance, uh, the water rises by 20 metres, then you're going to have a column of water rising 20 metres. So, and that water has got to go somewhere so if you look at your chart and you see that lumpy bottom it'll give you an idea of what type of sea you're going to get anyway let's get on with this because i'm doing this for a reason Ugh. okay another rule of thumb when you're cooking this was a clean lid when I started. Look at it now. That would normally be all over here. So when you're cooking, just like anything else in life, if you have protection, use it. Otherwise, well, you know what they call somebody who doesn't use protection? They call them a... Well, we've got to the point now where the lines are on the new fender step. Um, we have treated it with some sort of special wood treatment that apparently lasts 10 years and repels all water. So thank you to one of our supporters who helped us out with that. Um, 
What I'm doing now is we've adjusted the lines to be the right length. We've used bowlins and bowlins have got nasty habits. Sometimes they can jerk themselves a little loose. I'm just putting a bit of seasoning on using the splicing kit. So I've got my, 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 my sewing palm out and I've got a nice big needle. But I went and treated myself to three metres of new 8mm line. Because the nice thing about new line is it's very easy to get a needle through. It's so much easier to get a needle through this than it is to get it through old crusty lines. So just give it a wee shove and off we go. Look at this. And this will just seize the bowlin so we don't need very much on it. And um, we've then just got to put a bit of protection for the hull um, along these, these leading edges, these facing edges. And we'll do that by cutting bits off the old fender step and attaching it to this. And when we do that, we're done. We've got our wooden fender step and we hope it lasts more than about 12 months because that's generally what we get out of one of these. So if we get two years out of it, we're quids in. Beverly's uh, finishing off our fender step. Um, she's cu cutting up um, our old one and um, she's got um, a rubber hosing underneath so that there's a cushioning effect. But we are in the very fortunate position that uh, one of our subscribers has uh, given him, given us his old uh, fender step. So, um, you know, things uh, are looking up on Salty Lass. We're going to have two, but it just means that when you're in that situation where you come into a situation where you, you need a fender step on either side, we'll actually have two fender steps. So as far as we're concerned, we are definitely winning. What we don't have is any nuts. <laughs> We've run out. <laughs> oh well, that's going to bring the project to a roaring halt for a bit. I'm amazed you didn't say... Uh, you haven't got any screws because the one thing for certain, Bevy's a bit screw loose. Yeah, I'm just going to tighten these up. Because <sighs> <sighs> they should be a bit tighter than this, you know what I mean? There we go. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of the old sailor's advice about reef early, reef often. Well. <laughs> I'm not really reefing, but I feel like I am. But uh, uh, it's a heck of a windy day today. We're seeing gusts of up to 50 knots occasionally, but mostly it's about 30, 35 to 40. But oh lordy, what a day. It's certainly scuppered our plans for the day because uh, we had plans to do other things. So now it's just a case of checking all the bits and bobs. We have got a new fender step, which was very nice. It was donated to us by uh, one, of our, one of our supporters, and that was lovely. But I'm just going around checking all the lines. I don't know if it counts as a rule of thumb or not, but <laughs> when it's a stormy day, put storm lines on. <laughs> That's definitely a bit of a rule of thumb. Ah, oh dear. The dinghy looks secure as well. That'll do for that. Well... The weather has improved enormously. There hasn't really been damage to the boat, but there's a few bits that have been battered by the storms. Our solar arch is one of the parts. It's been up there three, four years now. Um, it's been through quite a few storms, some Force 10s, 11s, and even one Force 12 at one point. But this time it had it right from behind us. And um, we did run out of these P-clips that we secure it with some when we were installing it. But the last few years it's got by fine with, um, without these extra p-clips but there's just two parts of the panel um, where the storm got behind it and started lifting it so we secured it with bungee cord in the short term but really we need to put these p-clips on and that's today's job. It's a lot nicer outside so I'm going to get a whole pile of stuff done out there. Um, I've got the fender step to finish. I ran out of screws and nuts and things like that but Gainer's gone and got me some. So we're going to get the wooden fender step finished. We've got the new fender step that we were given now installed. Um, get this done and if I can do I'm going to get the winches serviced as well because that hasn't been done for a couple of years but you know it's just one of those things look after your boat and your boat will look after you. So there you go that's yet another rule of thumb possibly a top tip but it's certainly something we live by. Um, there are people I see that don't seem, to, don't seem to believe in preventative maintenance. They just believe in using things until it breaks and then they 
they have a panic because generally when something breaks, it'll break at the worst time possible. So we try and do preventative maintenance. I suppose it's back to my aviation days. Everything has a mandated lifetime. When it reaches that lifetime, you tick it out, you throw it away, you put a new one in. That's how they do it, and that's why they get so few failures on aircraft. They get enough failures to make it a worry, but they get a lot less. So it's an expensive policy, I grant you, but I would rather go to the cost of fixing things now in here, like finding all the loose bolts in the frame, than being out at sea and have the frame fall off and then have all the stuff where the panels get wrecked, the controllers get ripped out, things like that. Well, it's even more expensive. So, rule of thumb, try preventative maintenance. I recommend it heartily. in the varnishing workshop. <laughs> um, I'm just varnishing um, our boat hook because uh, we have a wooden boat hook as well as a plastic one and our um, flag hoist because that after six years was in serious need especially as um, we left it out last season for the entirety of the season apart from two weeks when the Queen died. So, no, we even had it out then, but um, no, it's, but I think um, in future we're only going to buy rum seal varnish uh, because I did use a cheaper varnish and it's still tacky uh, after 18 hours and that's a heck of a lot of drying time between your coat. Which brings me on to another rule of thumb and that is there's no point in being penny wise if you're pound foolish. So at the moment I'm filling my rear water tank so that means I'm putting an awful lot of weight uh, at the stern. I've got to balance that off by putting water in my front water tank and then the boat will be balanced fore and aft. Well, I'm just passing the tidal board and um, it's just reminding me that if you are in an area that has got a sinusoidal tidal curve, then half tide is the same height regardless if you are on springs or neaps. Now, when I say the same, I do mean give or take a little bit, but it is the same regardless. 